picked up this portable 7 inch LCD digital TV at the local thrift shop for one dollar. They were giving it away. Well, you'll see why. Look at the condition of it. This is a small portable higher brand 7 inch TV and it's got um, that black crap that they put on uh, I don't know why they do this. I, I really, I don't know why they put this crap on that TV. It's got a little stand, stand it up. But um, first things first, I picked this up for a song, and first things first, we got to get this this crap off the edge, up off the, the the coating here. I mean, it's just it's so bad. It's all sticky. I mean, it's just the stuff is just horrible. So I think with uh, with a little bit of work, I can probably get this stripped. I'm going to use a very common product known as elbow grease. It's going to take off all the, the lettering on the front too if I'm not careful, but uh, we'll see whether I can try to preserve that. Just get this crap off. Yeah, see, see 99 percent of isopropanol will take this stuff off, most of it anyway. That's a little better. Yeah, that's a lot better. So I'm going to use some alcohol and a rag and uh, just to see whether we can get this TV presentable and then I'll try it and see if it works. I don't even know if this thing works at this point. I don't know whether it has a, just an analog tuner, whether it has a digital tuner or what it's got in it. But um, as I say, when I got it, it was just, it's just disgusting. This, this, this crud that they put on is, uh, should never have been used. And it just goes sticky and you know, I don't know why. I guess it's, it was maybe a, 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 either an anti-glare or an anti-slip coating or anti-reflective. I don't know why the manufacturers used this stuff, but but too many of them did, and it just it it ruins electronics. Not not ruins them as in the electronics don't work. I mean, it ruins them as far as anybody wanting to have it because this thing sticky, right? It ruins the appearance of them. That uh, speaker setup that I got given to me a while back was the same, and I was able to clean that up. That was that. What was it? Uh, what brand was that one? I forget. I think it was All Tech Lansing. I forget the brand. Anyway, I have a speaker set that was covered in this crap, and a little MP3 player, and it's now cleaned up and looking a little better than it did before. At least the the, the numbering's not coming off. The lettering's not coming off here when I wipe it down. It's just the coatings coming off, which is good. So I'm just gonna work at this off camera and get this thing shiny and then we'll see if it works. All right, now I've got most of it off. Something I did notice that the battery compartment did not have it inside, which I found unusual. I pulled the battery out while I was doing it. It has a lithium, a lithium cell in here. I don't know if the battery's any good or not, but I'll plug it back in and uh, we'll, I've got the adapter for it. So we'll just plug it into power and see if it turns on and what this does. I don't know whether this has got an analog tuner in it or a digital tuner. It's obviously got a tuner of some type because it does have, um, and it says digital television. So I'm kind of hoping that it, it actually has a digital tuner in it. I guess I'll find out in a minute. I'll plug the power in and uh, we'll see if it turns on. I hope the power cord will stay in. Okay, it's lighting up. There's a red light on here. Let's just see if it turns on. says higher AVN okay mode okay so TV or AVN oh it looks like it might have a digital tuner in it excellent we go get a cable and hook it up and we'll scan and see what channels it gets right, I got my antenna cable this is going to an antenna up on the roof and uh, it probably will need to be rescanned because I don't know when the last time this was scanned, but it said 2.1 CVC. So let me just figure out how to, how to scan this thing here. Menu. Uh, one of these buttons is going to move this over, I think. Balance. Menu language, closed caption. Antenna. Okay, here we go. And then I can probably move down to antenna, air. Auto scan. Okay, start scan. Okay, 
So we'll just let this uh, go through and scan the channels and see what it finds. It should find something that's got a fairly good antenna on the roof. It's scanning the VHF channels first. There are no VHF channels that are on the air around here on for the HDTV channels. They're all UHF, so it should start to find some now that it's on UHF. There we go. Seven channels there. Another channel, that's eight channels, nine channels, 13. See, there's some channels have got multiple channels on a single carrier. So we'll see how many channels I can pull in. This is using that Antop uh, omnidirectional antenna that I put up last week. So we'll just see how many channels I can pull in. I've got 21 channels found so far. Now 22 channels. I don't know how high the uh, what, how high they broadcast here, what frequency band, or how high the transmitters go. I know that they rescanned everything because they, they cut the band back again. Right? I think it only goes up to channel is it 49 now? Because they took another chunk of TV spectrum and reserved it for uh, cell phones for the 600 megahertz spectrum. So I think the TV band now ends at 49. It used to, it, it, at one time it went to 83, then it went to 69, then they took it out and made it to 59, and then I think now they've just they've dropped it down to 49 channels now. This TV probably only scans to 69. Yeah, looks like it's only going to scan as high as 69. Okay, so we've got TV channels. So there we go. Let's see what we get on this one. Turn down the volume. Don't need the volume up. Now what happened there? CBC. Hmm, check scanned in. Am I going to get it? I don't think so. Should get eight. Yeah, Chan. KVOS one. KVOS two movies. Oh, they've ch yeah they've moved things around again. KVOS three is now MeTV. TV as far as decades. Carol Burnett show. Start to TV 12.5. And where they're not coming in. Oh, there they are. Me TV Plus 12.6. Story TV on 12.7. Seventeen dot one. The signal is a little difficult to receive where the antenna is. It's in a bad spot. It does the same on my other TV. Twenty-four point one. Twenty-four point two. Twenty-four point three. Shopping channel twenty-four point four. The soon channel is still coming soon. French Channel, getting 28.1, 28.2 NHK World Service, another PBS channel, I guess First Nation uh, channel, TW, TVW, which is I guess the uh, House of Representatives or something, I don't know what that is. Anyway, 32.1. Uh, .1, and 66.1. And we'll, we'll lose that one pretty quick. So it looks like I'm getting um, pretty much all the channels I can get with that antenna doing okay. Let's say it's also got an AV input, so if I switch it to AV, it would be the plugs on the side, but uh, I figure I did okay on this one. I didn't have to do anything to it. Oh, I haven't even checked the battery to see if the battery works. We'll check the battery out and see if the battery even works on this unit. 
I remember when these were being sold, um, when they were still current, I remember seeing one and they were like $69 at the time when they were being sold in a local drugstore about, I don't know, 10 years, 12 years, 15 years ago, around the time I think when the, when the transition was taking place. But uh, a ah, neat little unit. Now let's just see if it works on battery. Ah, the battery's got a charge. I, I plugged it in and let it charge for like an hour. And uh, looks like it's working. I'm, I'm changing channels here because I don't want to get a copyright match. So there it is running off battery. So I think probably the reason why this was uh, so cheap at the uh, second hand store was because it was all covered in that. Nobody wanted to touch it. <laughs> anyway. Two bucks with with the seniors discount I got it for a dollar because they they looked at it said it will give it to you for a buck just because it was in such ugly shape I picked it up and mentioned that it was like what's with this so anyway I think they just wanted rid of it but it works so I'm not complaining little portable digital TV you pick up all the ATSC channels just have to have an antenna and it'll pick up ATSC and of course it'll pick up analog I'm sure as well if I hook this to my analog cable system I'm sure it would uh, receive analog as well we can do that I can hook it up to my analog cable which is also right here get it scan this should yeah it's pulling in the analog channels as you can see I've got analog channels on VHF exit the auto scan Okay, let's see what, there we go, um, this is analog coming off the, the cable, oops, the connector's not tight, that's all. See, on analog, if your cable is loose, you're going to get snow, it's the ground that's loose, especially on the low band. And that's something a lot of people don't realize is that um, the low band is affected more by loose cable. See the difference? The cable's not tight. The ground has to be tight. This is something that a lot of people didn't realize is that it doesn't affect the high band channels nearly as much. Right? High band channels look fine with the cable loose. Low band channels are all snow. See the difference is just making a good connection. That's also probably a problem that people run into that are picking up VHF signals off air is that their, their coax isn't tight and they're wondering why they're not getting good reception. The low band panels 2 to 6 require that connection to be good. If it's loose, it's not going to work properly. And this is the problem we find when we're using uh, coaxial cable for, um, for Ethernet over cable, or MOCA as it's called. Uh, we run into a lot of mocha problems, you know, slow data speeds and stuff, and pixelating TVs and so forth. And it's all traced to either not using compression fittings or it being loose. And as you can see here on this analog signal, see what I mean? That's the difference it makes. Same with channel 4. Channel 2, these are. Anyway, that's uh, I guess that's about it for this one. It looks good, and it's no longer all sticky. If you've got one of these devices where they've put that, that dulling spray on them, just use some 99% isopropyl alcohol on a rag. And apply a little elbow grease. And that stuff will come off pretty good. Sometimes it'll take the printing off depending on how it was printed, but in this case, it didn't. So there you go. Little 7 inch higher analog digital TV. Got it for a buck. Not complaining. Here's something I totally didn't expect. This is an analog signal I'm feeding in. It's an MTS stereo signal and it's stereo sound. That was something I totally did not expect to hear stereo sound on this unit. On the analog input, it's picking up stereo MTS. I plugged in headphones to confirm and it sounds good. Wait, 
that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.